Hey guys, uh, welcome to my review of Sherlock, Season 3, Episode 2, entitled The Rule of Three. Now, if you've clicked on this video and you've watched my Sherlock videos before with my good friend uh, Geek in Review, you may be wondering to yourself, why the hell can't you see our faces right now? And that is just boiled down to technical issues. They will just be in this, you know, uh, uh, audio conversation format. Geek, what did you think about this episode? I've said it in my in the last reviews uh, of the seasons that the second episode is always my least favourite. So I'll, I'll be honest and say I wasn't looking forward to rewatching this, but I did enjoy it a lot more in a rewatch than the other two second episodes that we've watched. I found this episode to be middling, but entertaining. And middling... You know, what I mean by middling is that we really don't get uh, a good sense of where we're going with the plot until like 21 mm. minutes into the episode. And I find that to be very, very frustrating um, with this particular episode. But I found that it's a really systemic problem with Sherlock. I think that these episodes, for the most part, have been overpacked. And there have only been a couple episodes of Sherlock that we've talked about so far that I thought had been handled really well. And unfortunately, this wasn't one of those episodes. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think the problem is that it's a good idea on paper, but it wasn't executed particularly brilliantly. I'll get into that when we get into the episode later on. But yeah, I think because it's the one episode that pretty much has every recurring character in it. I think there's only one or two missing. You mentioned recurring characters. I was really pleased to see... Uh, Donovan again in the opening uh, sequence of this episode that really has no bearing on the larger plot of the episode. Seeing Lestrade have basically have a hissy fit because he can't catch these robbers that have been committing these robberies uh, across London. But again, this opening doesn't have any bearing on the rest of the episode. So if I was the writers of this episode, I would have just cut it out because this ep this beginning really didn't have any point to it. Yeah, I think it, I agree with you on that. I think it's just probably to show Lestrade doing his job because outside of uh, any scene where Sherlock's sort of making him look like a fool, you don't really actually see him do any anything. The point of the episode where I just wanted to pull my hair out, I liked it because I thought it was funny, but I was like, guys, can we get to the fucking point already? The wedding party is about to do their speeches and Sherlock stands up. And... We know that Sherlock is a madcap, you know, a highly functioning sociopath. But the fact that he takes about 20 to 30 minutes to say something that really matters really pisses me off. I know that he doesn't understand social cues. I know that he thinks everybody in the world is an, is an idiot. But I'm like, dude, can you just pull it together for a second and just say something nice for a change? It could be stage fright or, or anxiety, but they never really hinted that it was anything like that. And again, I think the sort of issue with this episode is if they'd simplified it for me personally, it would have been better. Like maybe if, not to get too much into spoilers, but maybe if the crime that had happened, if it hadn't have been so severe, if it had been something like someone had stolen the wedding rings or something like that and they made it a bit fun. I feel like the final reveal of the person who killed these victims, uh, who, who killed the uh, soldier guy and who, who tried to kill John's former CO, his, the, 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 the officer guy that came to his wedding, was a little bit rushed and a little bit thrown in there at the end. I would have preferred if the episode would have had a little bit more focus from the beginning and sort of, and sort of, you know, led up to the reveal of who who the ultimate bad guy of the episode is. How would you have handled that? I think uh, because you've you know, this is the first time you're meeting uh, John's ex boss. Essentially, it's kind of hard to care and get invested about the character. So as soon as he showed up for me, I remember the first time that I watched this. I thought, right, he's he's the sort of hard nosed military type, very very English. So. He, he's probably going to be the bad guy or someone's going to do something to him. So I remember uh, 
that, but I think, yeah, if it had been a character that had been introduced to before or they'd set up in previous episodes, I probably would have enjoyed this a little bit more because of... I mean, what what would you say is the A-plot here? Would you say that the crime that they're investigating is the A-plot and the wedding's the B-plot, or is it the other way about? Because they're kind of connected. I would say the A-plot is the wedding and the crime at the wedding is a B-plot. But again, I don't like the way that this story is structured because again, for the first twenty one minutes, we're just kind of we're just kind of mucking about, and we're not really we really don't get a sense of what's happening here. The only thing that we know is that John is getting married and that Sherlock is nervous about the wedding, okay? But right. we don't really get a sense. We don't really get an idea of what of what you know John and Sherlock's final case is going to be until almost 30 minutes into the episode. So that's my that's my big giant problem with it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It does suffer, well, excuse me, it does suffer some pacing issues, but with the two plots, the way that they tied together, I thought that was really, not really well done, but, uh, you know, the way that they sort of joined it all up at the end, that was fine, but they could have just had one light-hearted episode of Sherlock that wasn't murder and death. Yeah, I think that would have pissed off some of the more hardcore fans of what maybe trying to inject too much humour. But at this point, we'd already had at least one, probably two, of the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes films. So I, I think, for me, this episode, it's my favourite of the second episodes because I hated the one in the first season and I hated the Hound of the Baskervilles in the second season. I thought I was going. this was going to be the one that I hated the most, so it's my... Most favourite, least hated second episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, watching it back, I was just like, make it light-hearted, have fun. Not everything has to be murder and death. You know, maybe if it had been like a missing persons thing, that there was a, that, you know, John's sister or uh, the bride, I forget what these brides are called now, uh, the bride's sister didn't show up and they were investigating that, and, you know, maybe someone had disappeared on the stag do or something. That would have been right. more interesting to me than this sort of... Mu- uh, what's it, it feels like a bit like Cluedo or Clue that game this episode where they're all locked in a room so you're just trying to work out who done it there is just one thing that I thought was useless Mycroft in this episode why was he there it was written by both of them the moment of the episode where I had the most fun and that I really thought worked and the kind of episode that I thought it should have been is when Sherlock takes John out to the stag party and Sherlock tries to sort of measure out the exact amount of alcohol that they both need to drink not to get drunk but they end up getting drunk anyway and they end up going to jail and Lestrade has to come and bail them out and that stuff to me was a microcosm of what I thought this episode should have been yeah there's there's a hundred things that you could do connected to a wedding or leading up to a wedding in any story but certainly a Sherlock Holmes one and I don't know. Yeah, I I think it's weird that I'm kind of praising this episode a little bit more than you were because I thought it'd be the other way about. That I'd be going, oh, I'm just gonna have to let's say this was terrible in the first five minutes, and that's it. You thought it was gonna be the other way around. I thought the only time that you and I have been on opposite sides of the fence is uh, when we were talking about the Hounds of Baskerville because if you remember, I liked that episode quite a bit, and you didn't like that episode at all, from what I can recall. I thought this episode, the one we're talking about now, was going to be the one where I went, this is my least favourite, but it's, it's so far, it's Hound of the Baskervilles, that's the one that, I think because the expectation was so high, because it's, you know, it's like the, the most, uh, well, I think it's probably the most famous Sherlock Holmes novel, the one that people that aren't into the books or aren't into Sherlock Holmes have heard of. The moment that I thought was really, really kind and really, really touching is the moment after Sherlock sort of composes himself and says you know most people think i'm an asshole most people you know you know call me an inconsiderate jerk but you john you know you know for some reason you like my madcap mind i mean he didn't he didn't exactly say those words but i thought that was a nice moment that sherlock just sort of slid in there and the way that john stood up and gave him a hug and say, hey, you got it right. And um, also, the way that Sherlock had all those cue cards. And on those cue cards, he had people who actually didn't come to the wedding. So 
while he was trying to figure out what to say, he just kept flipping through those. I did find that entertaining and funny. This is, this episode should have been a break. It just should have been John, Sherlock, and Mary, and everybody else having fun. Yeah, I mean, they even could have done something with the hangover where John and Sherlock wake up in a cell and they've got to try and piece together what happened last night. They could have just done that. I don't know what's going to happen next, but um, I hope that the next thing that happens is the thing with Mary because I, I'm i very, very excited to get to that. I've seen a few other things with Sherlock in my lifetime, but I don't think... Like, like what they did with Mary in this series, I thought was really, really original. And the first time that I saw it, I wasn't expecting it at all. So I can't wait to see that uh, story start and to see if I remember how it plays out, because I really like that quite a bit. Yeah, a weird thing about this episode, and I can't, I can't think of a better way to explain it than there's a great energy between those three characters. I don't like it when they're all together. Like, I like it when it's John and Mary on their own. I like it when it's Sherlock and Mary on their own. But when there's all three of them, it just seems that there's a little bit too much energy in the room. Oh, no, no, there's not that. It's maybe Mary's energy and Sherlock's energy is so at a different rate of flow. I've never really picked up uh, on that aspect when it comes to their dynamic. But I, but, but I can guarantee you, when I, uh, or when we talk about the next episode, I will definitely... Uh, you know, start paying attention to that more to see if I see it as well. But I never picked up on that. So, so good on you for noticing that. I don't know if it's in my head or I don't know if it's because Martin Freeman and the actress uh, that's playing his wife, it was his wife at the time. So I don't know if it's maybe that or something else. But yeah, it's, I couldn't decide if I didn't like Mary or I didn't like the actress. And I sat down and I thought, well, I like her because I've seen her in other things. And I like Martin Freeman and I like Benedict Cumberbatch. A lot of good ingredients in this episode that didn't result in a particularly great dinner, if you're asking me. I like the energy, I like that whole frantic, on a wedding day energy, because now I'm a bit older, I've experienced that and been involved with the wedding party and stuff, so I thought that was really good. Uh, I think the, sort of, again, the way that the two stories sort of matched up or joined up at the end was pretty decent. But beyond that, it's it's just an average episode. Like, again, it's they could have done a hundred things that would have been a hundred ways more entertaining, or maybe maybe even be a bit risky. Do take a risk every once in a while as well. But yeah, it's not not the worst episode by a long mile, but not the best episode either. I just thought that this episode was okay, but clearly, I thought that they they, they could have done things you know so much better than what they did. I will just simply say thank you guys for clicking on this video. If you guys want to, you know, um, follow me on social media and talk to me about Sherlock, uh, the place, the best place to find me is on Twitter. I'm at Creek Fanatic 88. But Geek, uh, if the good folks want to talk to you about Sherlock or anything else in pop culture, what will be the best place for them to find you? Yeah, if you go onto YouTube and you type in Geek in Review in the search bar, you'll find my channel. So uh, subscribe to that if you want to. Or you can reach out to me on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews, and that's all the one word. So go check them out. Give them some love uh, if you're interested in hearing any of that stuff. Until next time, as always, I'll see you when I see you. So much happened here, and so much is about to.